Joining us for today is Coach Check-In. He is the eighth-year head coach of Salisbury University Women's Soccer. Kwame Lloyd, everybody. Kwame, thanks for joining us. Sure, my pleasure. It's good to have you on. And in a normal season, of course, the fall season would be in the books right now in uh, December when we're recording this. Uh, what sort of things uh, were you and your team able to do uh, during a fall without a, a season to play? Well, I was pretty proud of what Salisbury was willing to, university was willing to commit to us um, from a safety standpoint. So we took our time and I didn't start training until uh, the first week in October. Uh, we went through a series of testing to make sure everyone's healthy and get everyone into the protocols, uh, understanding how to create our own bubble as, as a team, uh, so to speak. And uh, it was good. You know, we went through some trials and tribulations that first month. And then once we got started, we did really well. Uh, we trained three times a week, um, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, they worked with our sports performance group with our coach, Maddie. And then once we were allowed to, which so it took a couple of weeks, we started uh, doing inner squad scrimmaging on Saturday mornings. So um, that was fun. I mean, I think the kids enjoyed it. We tried to mix up the teams and not make one team more dominant than the other. And we put the scoreboard on and um, had my little speaker out there at some music. So it was, it was fun competition for them. Um, but I think that occupied them. And it was interesting because once we got into um, training, we didn't have any incidences with COVID. So um, I think the kids were really, I give them a lot of credit for being disciplined as well as our athletic trainers um, and keeping us safe and um, follow, helping us follow protocols. I can imagine that'd be a really great team building exercise too, to have to go through all of this uh, together and, and to still get to play against each other week after week. Well, the one thing with COVID is that, you know, accountability, right? So when you do any kind of contact tracing, you're not only affecting yourself, you're affecting your roommates, your family, your friends, anyone you come in contact with now has to go through some kind of contact tracing. So the accountability piece was huge for us um, when it came down to, you know, knowing what I do now affects someone else. And you talk about that in any regular season, but it came really into, into fruition when you, you're dealing with a COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And uh, the timing of this whole thing uh, for the program, it, it had to be tough just looking at the way things went last year. You went 13, three and three, regular season champions in the conference, the most wins in almost a decade and have to go on pause after that. Uh, sounds like the, the team did the best they could to keep that momentum going following the great season from last year while not knowing when you're gonna get to have uh, a competitive match against somebody else. Well, when you had last year, we had tremendous leadership. We had a great senior class that helped us uh, get to where we want to be. But they also set the tone for the class that was coming behind them. And that class has definitely been the cornerstone of what we've done over the last accumulation of the last four years. Um, and it was disappointing. Obviously, we want to see that senior class have the opportunity to you know, have their year, right? They've worked so hard for it. They, they set a, a, a tone for us with a new normal and the new expectations. So. Um, you know, this year's senior class, you know, we will have some come back and some's going to move on. But they did a tremendous job of staying focused throughout the summer, keeping us ready to go. And I, I honestly think that, you know, I know we had to take a lot of precautions, but August 17th, we were ready to roll. And I had a lot to do with our, our senior, our current seniors uh, being ready to go. And, uh, and they made, they definitely made the fall very competitive because, you know, this was, this could be it for them. A competitive fall that that might lead into uh, something in the spring uh, in the last couple of weeks the coast to coast conference has given uh, member schools the latitude to make their own schedules potentially for the fall and the spring uh, how's that process uh, coming along uh, for, for you guys you know it's, it's obviously a slow process we just got some guidelines this week and uh, i know that we've had small talk with with a few of the universities that are close to us within the C c2c with christopher newport um, and uh, Mary Washington University and hopefully St. Mary's, but we don't know what their guidelines are yet. And I think they're still waiting to hear from their administration. Hopefully we'll be able to get three or four games in the spring. Um, you know, our, our goal this fall was development, competition and having fun. And I think we accomplished that going into the spring. And I'm hoping that, you know, our, our seniors will participate this spring, which is a, it's a new thing for them, right? Because usually seniors don't participate in the spring. Um, we'll have some, uh, get some games and then hopefully, you know, we'll take a bite into this COVID-19 and um, enable them to have maybe even have a senior game where we can maybe 
just invite their families or their 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 parents to come uh, limit the number of people being there but i would really like to have an opportunity to uh, celebrate uh, what these seniors have accomplished. We're at a stage now when pretty much any game is uh, gravy, is uh, just a cherry on top of the summit that you've already made. So I'm sure they're looking forward to that, but they recognize, you know, if it doesn't happen, that's okay. But if it does happen, you know, enjoy it maybe even more than they would have if they were seniors under uh, regular circumstances. Yeah, I, you know, this group is incredible. They've always set the tone when it comes to fitness. They've always set the tone when it comes to competition. Um, and they want, I mean, I think every one of them would come back if they could come back. But some of them, you just want to move on with their careers. And that's typical, of, I think, in the women's game. Uh, these kids know why they're here. And they understand why they're here. And soccer is just the icing on the cake of their four-year uh, experience at, at Salisbury University. So, um, you know, I have nursing majors. I have... You know, PT. I have different different um, uh, majors within our senior class. You know, we're hoping that a few of them will be able to come back, and we're still you know, negotiating with their families and to see if that would work. But you know, at the same time, we have a tremendous group of juniors who have come in waiting for to take the rain, and uh, I think this will be a tremendous spring for them as well. I've been asking this of uh, a few of the coaches that we've chatted with over the past month or so. Uh, COVID and the pandemic brought on a whole bunch of structural changes to the NCAA and how you're allowed to practice and when you're allowed to practice. Are there any of those changes that have happened that uh, you'd like to see uh, remain permanent uh, when the pandemic subsides? Um, you know, I think as far as changes, I, I, I do like the periodization piece that that was implemented due to COVID. I think that it allows our athletes to come back safer and and um, and not deal with some overuse injuries. Obviously, I would like to slim it down a little bit. Um, but, you know, we are we are a technical team. We're a possession oriented team. So having an opportunity just to work on skills for, for a couple of weeks, um, I think our athletic training staff, I think our sport performance staff definitely ap appreciated that we had to go through some sort of periodization prior to getting into full on soccer. And I think our, and it's all how you approach it, right? So we tried to have fun with it. We added music, um, we added some competition, the ways in which uh, for us, like soccer tennis is huge and our kids love that. It was, enables them to stay six feet apart or 10 to 15 feet apart actually, and still work on competition. So um, I, I do enjoy the periodization piece. I probably want to make it a little bit shorter, but. I do appreciate what it does for our athletes as far as bringing them back slowly and um, getting them to a point where they, they feel they can compete health from a healthy standpoint. And this is just the uh, slow and steady approach wins the race. But once we do get to the end of the race, you know, potentially we could see some games in the spring. And uh, I just want to look forward a little bit to that and ask uh, you, who are some of the new players to the program that uh, fans ought to keep an eye on? You know, I usually don't single out too many players. Uh, and our freshman class, uh, I think, has stepped up quite a bit. And it was interesting to see them go from um, their first week to the to the sixth week or seventh week where we got the train. I think they did a tremendous job. They did a lot of bonding with them. I, you know, I think our what happens with us is our leadership allows the younger players to come in and feel like they don't have to necessarily prove themselves, but they don't have to feel like they are on the outside looking in. They're immediately felt... Um, they were welcomed uh, from the training pitch. It's a little bit difficult when you don't have the bonding experiences that you normally would have through a preseason or a season, whether or not those are bus trips, uh, eating in the cafeteria together and stuff like that. But I thought the, our, our freshman did a tremendous job. And we had a transfer that came in uh, from Frederick um, that really added some flavor to the way we want to play in the midfield. It's a good compliment to um, the way we want to play. And I think that some of the players were excited to see uh, someone like her come in and and show some difference how we play. But we have a midfield that is tremendous, that goes from our um, juniors through our, our current junior, juniors through our, uh, through our freshman class. And that transfer, uh, I think is gonna be a, a nice element to add uh, with our, our creativity and that kind of thing. So um, the pieces are there. I think we, I really wanna give a lot of credit to my uh, staff Past and, past and present that uh, did a great job helping me recruit a class that came in this year that just will add and compliment to what we have done the past years. Uh, I know you, I'm not sure if you're gonna ask this question, but I think 
would enable us to do is our inner squad scrimmages were incredible. They were so competitive from a skillful, so competitive, so skillful. At times, I, I almost swallowed the whistle because I was just watching what they can do. So from that standpoint, um, I'm very proud of my staff and, and what we've done in the recruiting process. It seems to be a hallmark of a really solid program that you can sustain uh, things from year to year. And in this instance, your junior class becomes seniors and everybody else moves up and is able to keep uh, the good vibes around the program going. You know, the, the newcomers and the freshmen come in and immediately feel like they're part of the program. The transfers come in and that's the sort of thing. It doesn't, it's not self-sustaining, but if you can sustain it for that long, it, it really, you know, people start buying into it more. You know, I think we, we had set some uh, new standards for us in the last, I think three years now with our recruiting and, and um, not bringing in too many role players, right? So we want players who can come in and compete right away. And we had to create an environment that those players would feel that they can come in and show and express themselves to the game of soccer. Sometimes you have environments where there's a little bit more intimidation and the younger players are, don't feel like they can step in and really, and really show what they can do or what they were recruited to come for. And uh, again, I give a lot of credit to last year's senior who started this about probably like two years ago um, and recognizing talent and allowing them to feel like they can bring that talent to training every day and not feel they had to be a small, shallow flower that could not blossom. So um, that environment has created us, allowed us to be competitive, allowed us the kids to have fun, be welcoming, at the same time creating a sense of family uh, and, and uh, camaraderie. Is Kwame Lloyd, head coach of SU Women's Soccer, and uh, this has been his latest coach check-in. Uh, Kwame, thanks for joining us, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing the team get back onto the pitch, uh, pitch whenever that is. Yeah, man. Go goals. <laughs>